Today we review the story of a tree killer. Bring on the schmaltz. Well, greetings, schmaltzateers, and welcome to Schmaltz Mark. My name is Wayne, and this, as always, is Kelly. How are you guys doing? Doing good? Caught up on all your Christmas movies? Well, if you're not, we're going to get you caught up, because today we're talking about Miss Christmas, starring Brooke Dorsey and Mark Blucas. Love Mark Blucas. And I don't know Brooke Dorsey very well, but I really enjoyed her. In she does a lot, did a lot of the Hallmark stuff, from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... Kelly, I thought that this film was about a beauty pageant. <laughs> well, is it, it not? It, Miss Christmas, I mean, that would stand to reason just by the title. But I, after watching the trailer, obviously, it was fairly obvious that it wasn't about. I thought that was going to be the big M. Night Shyamalan twist near the end that it turns out <laughs> the whole thing's a beauty pageant. Not so much. No? No. Did I, I thought maybe I missed it. You really didn't. Okay. Wasn't just subtle. Like, Buried in the subtext. Absolutely no pageant whatsoever. That's a shame. And I think it's a little unfair because I don't think you can just call yourself Miss Christmas unless you've been properly objectified by judges. <laughs> then, well, her and tree can... is judged every year. Yeah. But she is not judged every year on her. Well, beauty. call the tree Miss Christmas then. <laughs> this is, this is sh it's un-American is what it is. Absolutely un-American. Well, I'll tell you what, Kelly. It may not be about a pageant, but... There are real pageants in the world. Obviously. And there are pageants out there that are stranger than a Miss Christmas pageant. Well, Miss Christmas pageant isn't that strange. It's strange if you're not judged properly. It's strange if you're giving the name to a tree. <laughs> we didn't, she didn't give the name to the tree. That was her name. Listen, you can confuse me with all your little plot twists all you like, but I want to talk about real weird pageants. Okay. Okay. What you got? Let's start off with uh, this lovely lady. This is Miss Magic Marker from 1954. Okay, then. This, is she uh, actually holding a magic marker? She is holding a magic marker, and this just brings up a lot of questions for me. First of all, uh, did she write the M.M. on her chest herself? <laughs> if yeah. so, was that the talent portion? Oh, that would be talented. Or was she simply judged for the fact that she was the best whiteboard of everybody who competed? I really don't have any words for this. And then, and the biggest question for me is: Is that a permanent marker? I certainly hope not. Because maybe those so, are tattoos. So maybe those are the first like permanent chest tattoos. Chest a tattoos giant for M -M. a woman. Yes. All right. Next up, we have Miss International Posture Queen of 1957. That is a picture of her spine. It is a picture of her spine, and you know. There just aren't enough x-ray portions to beauty pageants these days. You know what? Inner beauty. Inner beauty. Exactly. See, you're on to something. Right. I also hear that this thing is now sponsored by the TSA. <laughs> I competed myself. Then we have the Miss Lovely Eyes pageant. No, no. no of the no, 1930s. No, no. Uh, this is also known as the Hey, They're Up Here pageant. Um, you know, and, and I just want to say that nothing speaks to female empowerment quite like a woman in a swimsuit with a bag over her head. Uh, no. And is that a pillowcase? The, the hood? It's a white hood over this white woman's face. They're I, just, no. And I'm trying to imagine what that's like on the red carpet. Carpet, You know, it's like, what are you wearing? Oh, well, the gown is Coco Chanel, but the hood is Stearns and Foster. When was this from? Uh, from the 30s. Hmm. Okay, they, were, okay. they were living large during the Great Depression. Oh, Miss Atomic Bomb, also 1957. Popular year for pageants. Um, What is on her? That would be a mushroom cloud. Yes, I can tell, but what is it made out of? Uh, it's hard to say. Is that like uh, tissue paper? Could be tissue paper. Could be some fano, fake snow. Uh, could be asbestos. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Was the 50s. They used asbestos for everything. I think they made underwear out of asbestos back then. Wow. Um, she later lost her crown because of some scandalous behavior. There was a great deal of fallout. Fallout. Oh, dear. Next up, we have 
Miss Indoor Health Queen. We're going to jump ahead a decade to the 60s. Woo-hoo. The wild and wacky 60s. And nothing says indoor health quite like go-go boots, a bikini, and, and a big pile of fanatic. Fake snow, yes. Or again, possibly asbestos. We're not right. really sure. Back then, they probably used asbestos as fano. They probably did. Yeah. So, uh, anybody who survived that... Now, those go-go boots... You go. She's rocking those go-go boots. I'm not entirely sure she's wearing bottoms here. We won't speculate. All right. But I will say this, Kelly, all that fano leads us very nicely into our review of Miss Christmas, which did, of course, feature some fano. Of course. Uh, Let's talk about the film. Uh, Kelly, what was this film about? This was about a Chicago girl who goes in search of the perfect Christmas tree for the tree lighting ceremony in Chicago when their original tree, which she had spent all year looking for, tragically has some sort of crane mishap or something. A crane mishap? I think so. I I didn't know what it was. I thought maybe it had some kind of nasty limb rot. No, 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 no. I think it was a man-made disaster. Okay. Um, and that is truly she tragic. had 10 days to find the perfect tree when she had spent all year looking for this one. So I see. it was going to be an impossible task. Not an impossibly impossible business no. plan, but still a big task. A big task, indeed. Yeah. Um, and she finds the perfect Christmas tree um, written to her by a young lad from Kloss, Wisconsin. Christmassy leads, Christmerson. Yes, yes, yes. And oh, and by the way, what is our uh, our tree designer? Holly. Yeah, her name is Holly. Yes. Holly Coon. Yes. And she calls herself Miss Christmas, even though she has not earned the crown. I am Miss Christmas. There, there, there. And the whole movie, I was anxious because I really did not want them to cut down this tree. No, I was I was emotionally invested in the tree. I was too. A little more so than the actors. Um. <laughs> Especially when the initials of the parents were carved oh, yeah. into See? the tree. You just can't yeah. cut the tree down. No. So anyway, she runs into obstacles. And then yes. in the person of Mark Lucas's character, uh, his name was, uh, what was his name? His son was Joey McNary, Sam. right? Sam. Was it Sam? Sam McNary. Sure it was. It was Sam McNary. And, uh, and by the way, I really liked Mark Lucas's performance in this, but we'll get into that a little later. And then he definitely fulfilled the I don't want to trope. Oh, he totally did. Yeah. Because he did not he was, uh, want to give up this tree. He was I, I don't like want it all over the place. Yeah. And it lasted for most of the film. It really actually. did. Because a lot of times the reluctance happens for, you know, five minutes and it's over. Or maybe the first act and right. then it's over. But this was on into the third act. Yes. Yeah, he took some convincing. Yes. But we won't spoil how that turned out, now will we? No, we will not. Okay. Um, So let's go through all the rest of the tropes. We've, uh, oh, well, the first one up is... Carriage rides. No, 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 it's not. Oh, it is carolers, which was my chosen main trope. Which means you got two points. I did. And then we move into carriage rides. Yes, there were, there was a carriage ride. Which is Holly's, one of her ways of getting the, because he was not only reluctant to give up the Christmas tree or the tree, he was reluctant to embrace Christmas. Anymore. Any, ever again. Because of, of a divorce. Yes. Which also leads us into the, he was not a widow. He was not a widower. He was not a widower. How was he not a widower? This was on Hallmark Channel. This was not over on Movies and Mysteries where they're... They're living on the edge over there with their divorces and they're kissing halfway through the movie. No, no. 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 This was on the innocent, sweet yes. little Hallmark channel. He was a divorced single dad, not a widower. Wow. Man, you put damaged goods in your movies like this now, Hallmark? I mean, seriously. Why couldn't you just kill his ex-wife? They didn't talk about her. They mentioned her that one time. I'm divorced. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. The kid, Joey, who wrote the letter, never talked about his mother. Talked about his grandmother oh. a lot. Yes, yeah. who had tragically had died. tragically passed away. Um, God rest her soul. And then, of course, I mean, obviously, we had city goes country because she goes from the big city to from Chicago to Claus. Yes, although she was originally a country girl because she grew up on a Christmas tree farm, which is when she gave herself the unearned title of Miss Christmas. Yes, I am Miss Christmas. I think her dad actually gave it to her. He's not a judge. He's not a professional. He can't do these and things. He's her daddy. He can do whatever he wants. He cannot. And Our daughter's sitting right over there. I don't call her Miss Jack. 
Well, she's not Miss Jack. I'm not qualified to name her a miss. You have to have professional judges. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I'm not coming down off this high horse. Um, obviously there was a decorating montage. Yeah. Oh, it was a good decorating it montage was. too. Um, because there was actually they went outside. And they were outside, and they were also talking during the montage, yeah, so which it, is not... They, usually, they they're just set to music, yeah. and then they come back and have a discussion about what just happened. But this one, they were actually... There was, there was a bonding moment there. There was, exactly. I I am a little curious as to why they were had not yet decorated the house, which was also a bed and breakfast inn. Yes. But the fence on the other side of the driveway was already decorated. Which you would think it would be for the lights, lights everywhere, lights. However... It wasn't. It, this was not. This was very light, light. Light, light. <laughs> As opposed to being light, heavy. <laughs> yes. Or heavy, light. Whatever. Uh, this, I think this is the first one we've reviewed so far that wasn't yes. a Lights, Lights Everywhere Lights film. It was. And they were very I think restrained. it's one of the few, period. Yeah, I think so. That are not Lights, um, Lights Everywhere Lights. All right. So, uh, Eye Opener Guy. Yes. He was an Eye Opener Guy, and he opened her eyes to what? Um, the meaning of new traditions, um, family is more important than your business, but she was an eye opener gal. Right. She because was. she opened his eyes that you can embrace and enjoy Christmas after loss. Loss. Yeah. Right. That is okay. That the person that has passed would not want you to hate Christmas because they're no longer with you. Um, but it is perfectly okay to hate Thanksgiving. I just want to clear that up right now. I think we've already talked about that. Yeah, we probably have. Um, and then, obviously, Fired Up was in the first 60 seconds yeah, of the Yeah, film. right at the beginning of the film, they're lighting up a tree. And yes. then it was nicely bookended right. with another tree lighting at the end. Right. So, but it was a little different this A little time. different. A little twist. Mm-hmm. There's there's your Shyamalan right there. What happened at the end? There's a twist. I won't spoil it for you. No. They were dead the whole time. Uh, huge kitchen. Yes. Yeah, big, big. They massive. did not spend a whole lot of time in the kitchen no. like they do in a lot of uh, Hallmark movies. But it but, was big. But it was big, and they did bake cookies. They did. Then there was the ever popular near miss kiss. Yes, and this was a exceedingly close. Could have measured it in millimeters. And they totally could have gotten the kiss done and said, you know, Joey, I'll be there in a minute. Yeah, the kid yells from off screen. Yes. He's not in the next room. He's upstairs. upstairs. They There's could have plenty, plenty of, time of time to kiss. Plenty of time to kiss. I think that was just an excuse. It, it was a tease is what it, it was. It was. They were teasing us. But obviously they solved that at the end. Obviously. and then That goes up. without saying. And then Save the Tradition was a little different yeah. this time. This had a Shyamalan twist to it too. This was not your typical, hey, there's a ice sculpting contest or something. Or some small town tradition that's right. in danger. It's and, the big city tradition. Yeah, it's the big city tradition. And the tradition was that there's always a tree in this square. And they create a nice little backstory for right. the tree in this particular square. In and Chicago. this is going to be the first year if she doesn't pull off a miracle um, of getting a new tree in time. So she's working hard to save that tradition. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, he's working hard to save the tree, which is a family tradition. It was right. pan- planted by his parents when they first married. Yep. And it impacted his family. Yes, it didn't Im- impact a large number of people, but it didn't matter to him. It, that tree was important. To that was him. a family tradition. Yes. So it was tradition versus tradition in a right. way. Right. Yeah. Worked itself out, though. It did. As these things do. Obviously, Mark Blucas is a sci fi guy. Yes, from his excellent work on Buffy so many yes, years ago. Many years ago. Uh, there may have been others, but I didn't really notice. That was the one that jumped out at me. Uh, we did have. Um, well, let's, let's jump ahead to the tragic backstory. And it was a tragic childhood backstory. Yes. But both, there was also a tragic adulthood yeah, backstory. Yeah, they each had their own tragic backstory. Yeah. She had lost both of her parents at a young age. Her mother before, I mean, when she was an infant. Right. Her dad when she was just graduating high school. Yes. And so um, she took on a lot of responsibility based on the fact that she was basically an orphan even though she was an adult she's an orphan at 18 and, and that's then, when she had to tragically sell off the family christmas tree farm right and then that's when she moved to the big city and became a city girl but she was still a country girl at heart 
And then his tragic backstory was... Nasty divorce, losing his mother a year earlier. At Christmas time. And, and his mother was the sort of the heart of Christmas right. for the family. All right, so then, you know, we got the conflict at the end, Kelly. It was both an unfortunate misunderstanding, and I say it was a non-problem problem. Do you agree with that? We had, there was some debate about this. I'm still on the fence of whether it was a non-problem problem, but I'm going to go with you and agree that it was. The reason I say is that is it fit the classic standard that if they would have just talked for 30 seconds, mm -hmm. they could have worked it out right there on the spot. Instead, what happens? They leave. They go to separate towns. They talk to other now, people. Now, I can understand maybe they're a little bit too hot right that second yeah. to have a rational conversation. I get you need that. to go cool off. But, you know, the next day, maybe a phone call would they've, solve they've the problem. They've both decided the relationship is over. Right. Because of one little disagreement. Listen, folks, I'm telling you, go ahead and give it up now. This relationship's not going to last if you can't make it through one little fight without going to separate towns. It doesn't work that way. It does not. Let me tell you, marriage, relationships, they're not Hollywood. They're not Hallmark Christmas movies. It's a lot of work. And it takes a lot of patience and love and compromise and communication. This is all news to me. She must have been doing all the work all these years because I'm just floating through this thing. All right. So, Kelly, what do we have for our total number of tropes? Oh, we... by the way. The widowed love interest, we should mention again. Yes. Was not there. Was not. I expected it to happen. So I got no points for my trope. We had a total of 17 tropes in this film, yet we both went over. Yeah. I said 18. He said 19. No points. We were so close, though. We were so close. You know, to go for a high, really aggressive guess like yes. that and to get that close and then be denied completely, mm -hmm. it's just not right. It's almost as wrong as naming yourself Miss Christmas. I am Miss Christmas. Okay, Kelly, so let's talk about this uh, fine cast of actors in Miss Christmas. I thought the overall cast was fantastic. Even the supporting actors, which I, I really wasn't familiar with any of them, um, I really enjoyed their their roles. I, I thought they were great performances. I thought Mark Lucas especially was really strong in this. He gave a very nuanced performance. <laughs> took a character that could have yeah. very easily become okay. a caricature or an archetype. Because he was somewhat curmudgeonly. Which is typically was reserved uh, for the wrong guy in these right. films or the wrong gal in these films. But um, to have our main guy be the one that was so anti-Christmas, but him still be charming. Extremely charming. Was, yeah, you still liked him and you, you still him rooted lot. for him. Right. Was, was I mean, it, you owe all the credit for that to Mark Lucas. Yeah, and a lot of uh, credit should go to Luke Ressler. I assume that's how his last name is pronounced, who played young Joey. I thought yes. he was really good. Uh, always good to see a talented young actor like that. Yep. All right, story. Uh, well, before we move on to story, let's talk about our guesses and our scores, yes. Kelly. I gave this one an 8 for acting. And I gave it a... Um, also, I gave it an 8. All right, so I guessed 8. And you guessed... I guess seven. That sounds to me like you got no points and I got three points. You did. The comeback has officially begun. Moving on to story. Yes, story. I gave story a seven for this film. And I did as well. There you go. We're in agreement. Uh, my reasoning was that it was a little bit predictable for me. In fact, I pretty much predicted how this story would really play did. out in, the in pre our recap episode. You were pretty much right on target. Now, just because it was predictable does not mean that it was bad. No, it was very uh, enjoyable. It was. I enjoyed watching the film. Um, so I just wanted to be surprised a little bit more. Right. Um, I was wondering how it was going to end, but you called. You called it for sure. All right. We had guessed. Uh, I had a guess of a six on that, which means I was under. Our average of seven. And I had an eight. Ooh, that sounds like you went over. I did. No points for me. Zero points for her. Three more points no, no, no. for me. I had two points because I guessed the trope correctly. I'm talking about story. Okay. I'll All give right. you your two points later. Let's focus on the big picture here. My comeback is happening. We all right, moving on to... Visuals. Visuals. I gave this a 6.5. I gave it a 7. There was a visual style here I didn't really like. It's just a personal thing with me. There's nothing wrong with it. 
but it's a style that showed up in commercials a few years ago and it's become very popular where all the black areas are kind of washed out and milky looking. Um, and I'm just not a fan. And I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. So I love the farm. The farm is definitely a place that I would like to go visit. Yeah. I mean, it was really, really pretty. Yeah, the locations know, were beautiful. I don't the know sets if they were actually beautiful. shot it in Wisconsin. If they did, it, I'd like to go. If by Wisconsin you mean Canada? Yes. <laughs> Uh, so that's an average of 6.75, and I'm sorry to say we both busted on this we one. We did. We both guessed nine for visuals, yeah. and we didn't even come close. Got double losers on that one. All right, Kelly, uh, total number of tropes. We both busted, yep. so that's zero points there, but you did get two points for guessing the trope of the day, which means our final score for this film is six. Two. Or six to two. You typically However would take the higher it. number first because the higher number is clearly representing a superior individual. I think ladies go first. Losers go first. Hey, Kelly. Yes. You know, it's not schmaltz. If it ends with a kiss. If it ends with a kiss. <laughs> you mean unless? Wait a minute. Hey, now. Are you robbing me of a kiss? Get over here. <laughs> to watch more schmaltz, Mark... Click the rectangular thingy up in the top left. To subscribe to Wannabe Films, our channel, so you can always know when we post, click on the round thingy to the upper right.